We have a very special judge in Harris County, Judge J. Elaine Marshall. She is the one who always swears in our HPD cadets. She is my guest on my Houston Women podcast. And with no laws, what she shares with us is what we can do today to make a difference in a troubled teenager's life in light of the Uvalde tragedy. It's an amazing listen. Please check it out. My Houston Women podcast sponsored by Mattress Mac at Gallery Furniture, always supporting our Houston area women. Well, we had her on the Houston Women podcast a couple months ago. I call her our singing judge, (laughs) Judge (laughs) Elaine Marshall. Judge, I met at, uh, she does all of these swearing in at the Houston cadet graduations. And it's just such an honor when I started to get to know you and in addition to taking such good care of our cadets who then turn into our HPD officers who protect us here in Houston, you do a lot of other stuff as a judge on the side. And one of the things that I think you're most proud of, well, you've got several programs, you help our veterans, but it's your teen court that you created, Elaine, that you are so proud of because you see how it's affecting their lives. And in light of this Uvalde tragedy, um, it's so important that we pay attention to what's going on in the lives of our teenagers, right? Especially if they're struggling and getting involved in the law. Right. It, um, it has been just so bittersweet with all that's happened this week. But for me, uh, just dealing with the, the kids and making sure that they understand that their every action has a reaction and, and there are consequences that, that surround their, their actions. But being there for them, my staff, um, the attorneys that helped me, you would just be amazed at, at when, you, when you witness what goes on in teen court. The student volunteers are fabulous. The students uh, that, that come in, because uh, let me just say a little bit about the teen court process. Yeah, how did it start, the origins? We actually, you know, Dana, I, I'm starting in July. I'll be starting my 35th year as a judge. Wow. And when I first started, I was not in a jury court. I was in a, a, a trial court, a judge trial docket. And we'd have the kids come in and they were, you know, they would, you know, curfews or they were fighting in school or disrupting class. And so I kept telling uh, the then Judge Sylvia Garcia, who's now our senator, that I said, you know, I have to have a place to, to talk to these kids. So we set that up. Then we kind of got away from it. And maybe around 2011, 2012, it started back up. So it started out with like 14 kids, one of which just graduated from law school, uh, a student volunteer just graduated from law school. So just to you know, and I get goosebumps when I, cause I just saw him this weekend for his graduation party. <laughs> That's amazing. But it was, you know, w- what we do is the kids, I developed a program where I wanted the students to be that advocate for, for the student defendant, because kids are harder on each other. If you think about it, than most adults are, because if you put the mothers and the fathers on the jury panel, they're going to be sympathetic to, ah, yeah, well, he really didn't mean it. The kids kind of go in for like, no, he knew better. You know, I know better. I know what I'm supposed to do. So I have student volunteers. The volunteers, uh, we started pairing with the law school for uh, criminal justice. And uh, under the direction of Miss Jessica Nolly, they were Uh, they have their teen court. So we developed where we would go pick the student volunteers up from school in the in the afternoon. I assigned cases to them. We have real cases, thefts, curfews, assaults, fighting in class. These are non-traffic violations that these kids are committing. And those are the ones that the thefts that that matter. The kids are the defense attorneys and the, the student volunteers are the prosecutors and they're also the jury and we have uh, three judges it's myself and two others judge uh, Shirley Collins and judge Dana Drexler and we handle all of the cases just to make sure that everything is done properly in terms of how the trial flows but you would be amazed at watching the children interact with the defendants Um, one of the 
uh, just to share a story and not call any names, but um, had everybody in the courtroom in just in utter tears was a defendant was accused of theft. And he was um, at the, during the trial, the, pro, the uh, his defense attorney said, I think you need to tell everyone why you were stealing. And so kind of perked everybody's attention up and we, you know, everybody inside the, the courtroom is listening. And he said that, you know, his mother had recently passed and that his older sister was the one that had taken on him and his two siblings. And she had three siblings of, she had three kids of her own. So now she's taking care of six kids and it was just, she just, you know, barely worked enough hours to, you know, buy the food, pay the rent, those sorts of things. But she had taken on that responsibility. So he was not stealing anything for him. He was stealing school clothes for the, the younger sibling. And so, you know, everybody's in there like, okay, so this, you know, this is that. So the kids are now like, so you knew that was wrong. Yes, I did. Right but I didn't have a choice. And so when the prosecutor who gets up and has, you know, we train them on the defense side, we train them on the prosecutor side. So the prosecutor gets up to say what punishment they think that person should get. And usually the prosecutors are the one that kind of go for the gusto. I want them to have 40 hours of community service, I want them to do this, that, you know, and the third. And so the prosecutor gets up and says, I really think that what he needs is us. And I wow. would like you to give him four jury terms and no community service. And you know, you're just taken aback because you're sitting here going, okay. And so when the defense gets up, he goes, she stole my thunder. And, but afterwards, when they, the jury came back and they gave him four jury terms just to come back to be with us to be with teen court students. And so they, they got, a, everybody came up to this child while they were, he was waiting on his paperwork, surrounded him. And there was one child in the middle of them that just said, can I say a prayer for you? And Dana, that took us all out because it, for me, those, those kind of moments are priceless. These kids, the student volunteers, then went on to have a fundraiser, a car wash, and gave the money to them for school supplies. So it is like one of those programs where you, you if, if you reach one, and this defendant went on to finish high school, but he came back and he wanted to, before high, he finished high school, he wanted to join teen court because you, you know, you, you have to petition to join teen court and he did, but it is, it's one of those programs where I can't speak enough about it. I think this, even the, the student volunteers, because you're taking kids who sometimes are the first, first generation of college students in their families. And, and, and some of them are, are coming from backgrounds where no one in their family, even the volunteers have, have been to college. And the, the excitement when they, are telling us at graduation and we have a graduation where we give them the, the purple cords to wear for graduation. It's the sheer excitement of them um, knowing that, that they're going to school, they're applying to schools because we're asking them once they become seniors, what are you going to do? Where are you going? You know, are you, do I, are you applying to a college? I haven't seen anything. I haven't done any, you know, let me know what you're doing. And the defendants are coming back. Um, I, I can tell you, I had once one child that when we first started was a, um, he was caught gambling in school. They, they had this gambling ring going and it was, you know, the, it was just almost hilarious how they were doing it. But he came, he came to teen court and he'd never believed that I would tell them all. I said, you don't understand. I call. So you need to be at home at a certain time because if I call and you're not there, you're in violation of curfew, you know, curfew is these certain times. And I would right. pick the students because I knew which ones, you know, you just kind of know which ones are like blowing you off going, ah, she ain't going to call. 
and <laughs> and the shit. Yes, you, you know, will. Yeah, you hear you hear the fear in their in their voice, and I tell them all the time. I I go to schools. If your principal calls me, your teacher calls me, and I have to come to school, it is not going to go well. And they're going, ah, she she's not doing that. And it, you know, and so just to see their face, like, oh my god. She's on the phone. One guy told his mother, oh, stop it. She's not on the phone. Then he, she gets him on the phone finally. And then he can't say anything. I said, what's the matter? I, I just didn't think you would call. Well, this particular guy went on to graduate from Grambling and brought me flowers. And you know how you just see a kid in the back of the courtroom like, God, I know that face. And, you know, and then when I see, when I recognize and figure out who it is, I'm, you know, I'm just a bundle of, of just crybaby. I'm just a crybaby. And I oh. tell them that all the time because it matters what you do with kids. It really, really matters. Mm -hmm. And all of these babies are gone, but we have got to find a way to start paying attention to what our kids, what, what they need. Yeah. You know, oh. and it, you know, it's. My, my grandmother used to tell us all the time when any of us got pregnant, she goes, well, let me tell you something. You can pick where you want to go to school. You can pick where you want to live, what kind of car you want to drive. You can pick who you want to marry, all these different things. She says, one thing you cannot pick are your parents. So you need to be the best parent you can be because nobody picks, you know, kids don't get to pick you. Right. And, and it, you know, it just, it just rang out to me and, and. I, I think with this, with teen court, it's always been my baby. And, and I, you know, I don't, I love receiving letters from them. I, I got one letter just the other share day. Share it with me because I know a lot of times the wisdom that you've passed on to these kids, mom might not have known these things because maybe she didn't come from wisdom and you share and they truly, I mean, it, it touches their heart, what you've done for their children. And the, the one, the recent, most recent one I got was, um, she just said, thank you. Um, she said, I, I could not end this school year without expressing my gratitude. Uh, and she tells me who her child is. She said, I just wanted to take the time to let you know that I appreciate you. I have accompanied him to every teen court. I sit in the back row. I have watched him from freshman year to present 11th grade. He was full of questions and you took the time to answer every question. You're, you've encouraged him and he has now become confident and inspired to become a lawyer. And I can't thank you enough for what, you, what you're instilling in my child. Mm. And, and, I, and then just, just the other day I got this one that said, I participated in teen court from the fall of 2018 until the spring of 2021 when I graduated from high school. Judge, I just finished my first year of college and starting to research potential careers. And one I'm interested in is law. I'll be back in Houston and wanted to know if I could pick your brain and talk to you about your profession. I would also be interested in seeing cases presented in court. If any of these options are feasible for you, please let me know. And she said, I learned a lot from teen court. And those, those are the kind of things that you want to instill in them. Yeah. Um, I have over a hundred kids and, and they're doing different things in, in their grades. Uh, we just did our graduation last week. I have one student going, one senior's going to Oxford. Uh, wow. State, uh, uh, Louisiana State. I mean, they're just, they're going and they're doing, and it's the excitement of it. And, and for us, um, you know, we're giving them the cords. I, my budget for teen court is, the cords that we give them for graduation and food. I am, I am a athlete's mother. My uh, and and all the people listening know that if you if you if your child played a sport and you packed a, a cooler in the back of your truck, you packed more than you know two drinks for her or him. <laughs> you just you know. And so people would come and get my kids would come and get my keys from the stand and go to my car. And get the snacks because I was the one that had all the water, the Gatorade, the 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 everything, and so it is just I am just have been just involved. You have got to get involved and see what the kids are doing and how they're doing and and what they're doing. That that's important, and um, I don't know um, 
what else we can do other than to just to keep this going because this this program this teen court program has been my baby from the start but i just believe that kids kids are are, are what we need they're they're our future and and so we have to find different ways innovative ways to in, invest in them um they they write me i email them i put all of my personal information on the on the gifts that we give them our teen court budget consists of food because we um I've always been of the opinion that kids, after they get out of school, because teen court is from six to probably, we usually round up about 8.30. So when you get out of school and you're a defendant or you're a mom bringing, bringing your defendant to, to teen court, or you're the student volunteers, I already know because I have a child who, you know, you get hungry. That's right. your peak time. So our budget is feeding. I feed everybody who crosses the door. I, if you bring four little brothers and sisters, everybody's leaving with food. Everybody's sitting there eating. That's that's just what we do. And, you know, and the parents are like, can he have some? Of course he can. I'm, you think I'm going to just feed one person and not? Of course he can. And that's just been the way we've done it from from the very beginning is, you know, Elaine, I've been reading about the the suspect in this Uvalde case, uh, conflict with the mother, living with grandma and grandpa who are elderly and, you know, not not dialed into his world. Mm -hmm. He was involved in cutting and all kinds of, of things that were just so evil and devastating. And you're not these kids mother. So it doesn't need to be the parent sometimes. It's you're a community leader who takes time and you understand the importance of giving back to these kids. And that's what anybody is capable of helping these kids if their family life isn't going well. We can step in and be that that kind of surrogate. Right. And and it's just, I think, an avenue for them to talk to. My daughter is is one of the the attorneys that that um trains them and you know she'll stand up and tell the kids you know i'm still afraid of her and then she, <laughs> you know I, you know and she'll tell them you know how old she is she goes yeah nah, she she calls or she says stuff you know oh, yeah you need to be afraid of her but it's that i think it's the it's the understanding that that all of us are here for one mission and one mission alone and that is to get you, walk you through this. This is okay. So you got caught stealing or you got caught past curfew. You know, I, because I asked them all, you know, what is it you want to do? And, and I am the, you know, it's always like the good cop, the bad cop, but most mm -hmm. of the time I'm telling them, Hey, you know, this is, this, this has to stop. And they start to listen. And if you, you know, you have a judge that's sitting up there in a robe and, and those kids, when they get up, I hug them because I'm like, look, you know, we, I, I can't, I can't get any older if I know that the world, you all are going to be running the world. I, you know, you got to be able to take care of me, you know, and they just yes. kind of look at me like, yeah, okay. You know, but it is, you know, and, and I try to stay up on, on, on the music that they listen to. I mm -hmm. try to stay up on, you know, and I tease them all the time. I said, I am, I am socially challenged. I can't, I don't know how to, uh, what's the, how I, Twitter tweet, whatever it's called. Oh, all the social media. Yeah, I can't do it. And you know, they're laughing. And so I said, so your best bet is to call me or email me. And so they, you know, but if they, and I tell them all, you email me, I email you back. And those kids will email me and I email them back because it's important for them to have one outlet that they, and I said, you know, I understand, you understand, what you have to understand is I'm going to tell you good, bad, or indifferent. I don't think you should have done it that way. I think you should have done it this way. But I'm also going to tell you, thank you for at least reaching out to me and recognizing that you did something wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How can, do you pick students already? Do you have your students or can other students get involved in teen court? How can they get information on this because this would be so great for more and more students to have this opportunity our student um our teen court i'm trying to think you can email my assistant and he will send them applications out um they can go on our web page and see there you go dana asking me i'm um, so you know we can get it up we can get it up uh okay. when we 
post this, we can get the information up so people can get in touch with you, Elaine. Okay. Okay. I was like, you see, there you go. That, I'm sure a lot of people, this is very important for uh, the kids to get involved in this and to hear stories like that, that young man who just did it to help his siblings, you mm -hmm. know, that's, that happens a lot and they don't have a caring person who digs a little deeper to find out why they did what they did. So for that, you, uh, you're just thank you. I mean, when you told me about this program, I thought we've got to share this with our sunny listeners because it's incredible. I, um, I am really, really, um, I'm humbled because you took the time to, to at least, uh, to push it forward. I mean, I know that, that, you know, the things that you do, you know, you do them and, and, um, I, I I'm a, I'm a stickler for sayings and, and, and I think I was raised by, old, you know, grandparents and parents and my, you know, I'm an only child. So everybody had a hand in me and, and, you know, my grandfather used to say, and my grandmother used to say the same thing. What you are is God's gift to you. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. For me, if I can reach one child, if I can turn one, one baby around and say, okay, I'm not going to do it that way anymore. Um, I, I just think that's, that's a reward that you get, not for anything of value or glory or anything, but just to be a tool so that one kid can know that there's somebody out there that I can reach out to. That's amazing, Elaine. Thank you. And thank you for sharing. I thought you would be the perfect person to kind of guide us from here on uh, after that tragedy. What can we do? This is what we can do. And, and give us the saying again, what we are is God's gift to us, what we become. What you make of yourself is your gift to God. Thank you, Elaine. Judge Elaine Marshall, thank you again. God bless you and keep up the great work with all those students. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate you so much. Thank you.